We've reached the holiday season once again. Not only is it time for snow and hot chocolate, but also for generosity and presents, which will be the topic of this list. With video games being a popular gift around the holidays, why don't we turn to the world of video games to see who can teach us a bit about generosity. I'll be looking at characters who do something generous in-game, whether it's for other characters in the game, the player, or anyone else. This can range from giving gifts to simply sharing some time with others. And to get in the theme, we're having a gift exchange in the imaginary office, but only two people signed up for it, so here's your gift judgment meter. Oh boy, but I didn't get you anything. But how? There was only one other name on the list, and it was mine. Who'd you get a gift for then? I got a present for DJ Weird Sister. I made her cookies. I mean, that's cute, but- But she's not even here. Wait, what kind of cookies? Moon cookies. They're in the shape of the moon. Our moon, not Saturn's moon. I don't care about Saturn's moons. Did Saturn have any moons? I don't know. Well, your gift's an invitation to be in this video, so I guess I didn't do much better on the gift-giving front. Yes, Box. No Box. <laughs> you can click one. You can even change your avatars mid-video to all the other characters you've been this year if you say yes. Yes, I would love to participate. Well, I guess that means we can start the top 10 most generous video game characters. Number 10, Toad from Super Mario Bros. 3. As soon as you walk into Toad's house in this game, he graciously tells you to take something to use on your journey, no questions asked. Pick a box, it's... I can't do a Toad voice. He needs a lozenge. His throat's scratchy. He sees you're the famous Mario, and he has three items that generally help Mario, so he sees no issues in handing one of them over. He could charge you 99 coins for this super rare leaf, not actually rare, but he knows being a lowly toad, he can't use it, at least at this point in the series. Even the house he calls his shop when obtaining the secret whistle gives its flagship item away for free. This all but proves Toad is an upstanding citizen who just has a heart as big as the Mega Mushroom. Of course, if he's not going to use any of those items, it would have helped if he gave me all of them at once, but beggars can't be choosers, I suppose. Number 9, Mad Eddie from Princess Maker 2. He sells gold at his store. How much does it cost? Nothing! When can you get it from him? Anytime you want! How's that for generous? Yeah, I want that. How do I get that in real life? I think you'd have to commit a robbery to equate this to real life. Oh. Now the existence of this character might sound game-breaking in a game where you constantly have to purchase things with the money you raise, and yes, yes he is quite broken. Being a game for Microsoft DOS, this was a cheat shop programmed into the game that you could unlock by putting in a special code in your DOS file, which is probably why Studio Gynex, yes that Gynex, gave him a crudely drawn character image. This guy's a little shady, he's drawn differently than the rest of us. I'm not sure if he was available on the various other platforms this game was released on, but he was officially removed from the Steam re-release of this game in 2016. So don't try to give Mad Eddie a visit anytime soon. Number 8, Chibi Robo. What is Chibi Robo even about? He's a helper robot who wants to combine with the bigger robot, but the bigger robot's missing his leg, so Chibi Robo has to find it. Regardless, while finding it, Chibi Robo is super helpful, cleaning the house they're in, helping the dog, and helping the sentient items around the house. Doing all this earns you happy points, meaning Chibi Robo's actions are certainly appreciated based on the name of this point system. While I'm never quite sure if he's doing this for selfless means, considering the homeowners bought him as a gift for their daughter rather than to be a mini-maid, I like to pretend Chibi Robo just likes to see the joy of others. Just look at his resume, he helps the big robot, he helps some aliens that show up out of nowhere, and he saves this family's marriage. Even if Chibi Robo is just programmed to tidy up the house, I'll always remember him as that surreal robot that exists only to help people. Number 7, Dalsim from Street Fighter. Dalsim is here not because he gives gifts like previous entries, but rather because he's one of the most charitable fighting game characters in history. 
Dalsum is a pacifist who only fights if the tournament victory can help the masses. In Street Fighter Alpha 2 and Street Fighter 2, he uses his yoga fighting skills to raise money in the tournament for his village. While his village was in need of funding for necessities, Dalsim retired in his Street Fighter 2 ending since he felt it was morally wrong to use violence to raise money, even if he gives it to others. So he took the guile route by going home to become a family man, and using his newfound free time to simply help other people. He returned to the tournament in Street Fighter 4 when SIN was blocking off the water flow for his village. Really though, you can get Dalsim out of retirement in any game as long as he's popular enough with the public. Number 6, Mr. Satan in the various Dragon Ball Z video games. The video game version of Mr. Satan gives a lot more gifts than his anime and manga counterpart. In many DBZ games where he's playable, he has an attack where he gives a gift to his opponent that is a not so secretly disguised attack. Surprise, it explodes! This attack is based on the anime scene where Mr. Satan gives Majin Buu a Game Boy that's also a bomb and attempt to kill him while he's distracted by the Mr. Satan themed video games. Pick up yours today at any local KB Toys. This attack was copied over most accurately in the Budokai fighting game series, but variations of it have appeared in Budokai Tenkaichi and Xenoverse. Budokai Tenkaichi has Mr. Satan comment, I know it isn't much, but here, as he hands his opponent a gift based on the box of poison chocolates he first gave to Boo, and then the opponent takes time to examine it. It looks like they legitimately wonder what's inside, but don't want to open it for some reason. Oh, excellent wrapping quality, why don't you just throw it away, I thought we were in a fight. Xenoverse had the worst version of this attack where he just throws a present on a parachute that slowly floats over toward the opponent. Aw, oh, look at him, he can't fly so he needs a jetpack. He's had that in games since the 90s, how did it take you this long to notice? Oh. Still, he doesn't fit in with his friends. So sad. This present has the chance to heal though, so it's a more genuine gift in some cases, or it just leads to pain like its predecessors. But to me, a normal human bystander in the Dragon Ball universe, there's no way these gifts could be dirty tricks. Mr. Satan saved the world twice from incredibly powerful beings. These must be normal gifts he's giving to show respect for his opponent, and the explosions are delayed responses from the force of his quick attacks. What a thoughtful and respectable champ! Number 5, The Great Fairy of the Fountain from The Legend of Zelda. It's nice to walk up to a fountain or in a cave and then a fairy comes out just to restore all your health and magic. Or perhaps she gives you an item. The Zelda series is no stranger to random people giving you things when you walk into caves, as we learned at the very beginning of the first game, but the Great Fairies are the most consistent characters in the series that give you stuff. Since most Zelda games feature a different version of the same character in each game, the Great Fairies also vary. The one that always stood out to me is the Great Butterfly Fairy from the Minish Cap. She'll ask you for all your rupees, but if you give them all to her, she'll say she doesn't actually need them and give you a bigger wallet instead so you can hold more rupees. And don't worry, she lets you keep the rupees, she doesn't just take them. What I like about her scenario is she sees if you'll be generous before she shows her own generosity. Showing some kindness pays off. Not only do you get a larger wallet, but a life lesson too. Number 4, Baraka from Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat 2 got fun with its finishing moves, adding babalities and friendships to lighten the mood from all the killing. Friendships to this day are still my favorite way to finish a fight in Mortal Kombat. They show we don't have to be violent outside of the 90 seconds after the announcer says, fight. Some of these friendships are just gentle actions, like planting a flower or making a rainbow. Others give something to the opponent, like cake. And the male ninjas, well, the ninjas reveal this fight was just an excuse to advertise their new toy to you. I do need a few extra gifts for this holiday season, though. But the nicest of all these friendships was Baraka's, where he gives you a quaint wrapped gift. He's a scary one. I don't want a gift from him. He's not scary, he just wanted to be friends this whole time. Look at the other guy, he's going away. No, he's just drunk. Everything's okay because the word friendship is on the screen indicating it's okay. I don't actually know what's in the box, but there seems to be no ill intent in how he bestows this gift. He has a trustworthy smile. 
I like that he starts the friendship by making a hand gesture that implies, Wait, hold on a second, I just remembered why I came here. It wasn't to kill you. Happy birthday! Maybe the Tarkatans aren't as evil as they look. That's one hell of a surprise party, staging a full fight and pretending you're about to kill them. Number 3, Terra Branford from Final Fantasy VI. Terra is here for a similar reason as Dalsim. Her generosity comes in the form of taking care of a large group of orphans in the village of Mobleys. All the adults of this village were killed when final boss Kefka wreaked havoc on the world, and Terra took it upon herself to protect and raise these children, even giving up fighting until she was truly needed again in the second half of the story. And her reason for entering the fight once again? For the children. I may say it like it's a punchline, but it's actually really sweet and shows her true calling in life is to help children in need and come back when Dissidia makes a new game. Number 2, Deli Bird from Pokemon. The Pokemon universe is full of nice people. There are a lot of random NPCs I could have chosen, like any of the characters that basically say, Hey stranger, I've never met you before, but here's a move your Pokemon should learn. Does it fit your team? Do you even have a Pokemon that can learn it? I don't know, I'm just programmed to give you something. You could be potentially dangerous with this move that can cut through trees of a certain size, but here you go. Usually you don't get free things for trespassing in a person's house, you just get arrested. But in the end, these NPC characters aren't memorable in their own rights. Delibird, though, is kinda forgettable too, but he's the most generous of all Pokemon that exist and fits the holiday theme of this list, being the Santa Claus Bird. Why? Because the only move he learns is present. The move that gives your opponent a present. Simple name. Sometimes this present explodes and other times it heals the recipient. And you know what? An explosion can be a very thoughtful gift, right? No? Okay. To take his generosity a step further, you can breed Delibird to learn other charitable moves like Bestow, which straight up gives your opponent the item that Delibird's holding. Surprise them in battle with a gift they've been longing for this Christmas. A berry, a scarf, an orb that gives them an irritating burn upon contact? The gift-giving possibilities are endless when Delibird joins your team. Get yours today. Not available in the Kanto region. For number one, I had trouble deciding between video game Santa Claus and the choice I actually went with. However, there were not many video games that starred Santa to make for an interesting segment, so I went a different route. This character might not be as charitable as other entries on this list, or give gifts to others out of the goodness of his heart, but he's the character that immediately popped into my head when planning this topic for some reason. Number one, the merchant from Resident Evil 4. In a world of darkness, with an evil cult virus and no one sane around you besides Luis, a dog, and some guy who sucks, it's nice to know you have at least one buddy around each corner. Not every generous character has to give you things for free. Sometimes you just need a friendly character to give you bargain deals. Hey, he's gotta make a living too. The merchant may look shady, but he's actually one of the friendliest characters in the franchise. He genuinely sounds happy to see you. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. You're in this mini apocalypse of zombie-like people, and the merchant is kind enough to give you great deals in this danger zone, along with taking any items that are weighing you down and even giving you monetary compensation. That might just sound like the life of a normal salesman, but the fact that he risks his life to set up shop here for this stranger that he just met Got some rare things on sale, stranger. is kind enough for me. So, the merchant from Resident Evil 4. Maybe not the most expected character for this list, but for some reason, he sticks out in my head as the most generous character in gaming. Now that we've reached the end, what characters would you have added to this list? There's plenty of generosity in the video game world, so let me know in the comments, along with if you're properly educated on what moon cookies are thanks to us. Anyway, thank you all for watching, happy holidays to all, and we will see you in the next video.